Hello, this is Elaine from Antelope Beads. I'm excited to be here today. We are going to look at some new clasps that allow you to do layered bracelets with flat leather anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 millimeter with a 10 millimeter insert on top. This is really a nice addition to the clasp line for reasons that I'll explain to you in just a second. And then secondly, uh, we are also going to show you how to make a little a layered piece for the top of the bracelet using one of my favorite decorative knots, the Josephine knot. So, okay, let's get started. Okay, here we go. It's going to take me just a second. Okay, okay. It occurred to me that you probably couldn't hear that that uh, introduction because I had my my uh, headphones plugged in, and so let me get this just set up here, and I'll get this out of the way. Here we go. So what we are going to do is talk about how to use these new stacked clasp bracelets. It allows you to make a flat either a 20 millimeter or a 30 millimeter flat bracelet and then we can add a nice decorative component to the top so i'm going to start just with a real simple piece here this is a bracelet uh, with a 20 millimeter leather and i put a five millimeter leather and then a little row of round leather and then just because i wanted to kind of tie in the silver um, i added uh, a couple of strands of that new tinned thread. This stuff is, <laughs> I love this stuff. I mean, you know, first of all, the, the it's slightly antique and the texture just goes beautifully with this clasp. Now this piece, I just kind of put the pieces on top and I'm going to let them just kind of float around a little bit. But let's make one here with a uh, piece of, 20 millimeter flat leather and then I've got some watercolor leather which I think will look really pretty on the top of this and some one and a half millimeter light blue leather and then some of the tin cord so pretty pretty simple but what we're going to do to start with is just actually make the bottom part of the bracelet and that's going to make it easier for us to size the top part so um, as usual when I do this I'm going to start by Where's the glue? There it is. Okay, I'm going to start just by gluing in the, whoa, okay, I am hard on glue. Okay, um, I'm going to start just by putting a little bit of the glue in here, okay, and then I'm going to, as I always do, I'm going to put some right on the leather itself, do, 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 okay, and then we're going to just insert that into the clasp and I've still got my whole opening here to add the extra stuff but it's easier if I just do this part right off the bat so now I'm going to size the bracelet um, and so I want to end up with a I'm going to say a seven inch bracelet so that means that I want to cut the leather to about six and a half inches so I've got this um, and I know that the inside of the leather takes up about a quarter of an inch and so maybe I'm going to cut the leather right about here and so I can get either my leather leather cutters or oops, um, flush cutters boy what a mess okay that's there okay okay my leather cutters or flush cutters here and I'm going to just cut that from one side come on baby this is a case where I really should have the leather cutters, but this will this will work. Get it from one side, get it from the other side. Come on. Yeah. Eh, I don't. I usually just lean really hard right on the table to cut this, and there. Let's try that. Come on. It's almost there. Almost there. I think I'll get it from the other side here. Okay. You know what? I'm going to just grab a pair of scissors here. 
This is usually is not that hard. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and just glue the other side in. And if I can, I like to at least start when I glue a clasp on. I like to at least start so I've got the clasp still attached. I have glued so many pieces in upside down, but now I can open that and let that dry for a second. But this way I make sure that I'm not going to glue the clasp upside down. So, okay, so now let's put our center pieces in. So I'm going to take the this little watercolor leather and I'm going to put the round leather on either side of that and and then I'm going to put the little tinned thread to the outside of that and I'm going to go ahead and glue all these pieces in the top part and then I'm I for this one I'm going to add a little slider to hold all these little center pieces in place here so okay let me get this in my right hand here and again I'm going to just go ahead and put the glue and this is a case where you know I really could use that gel glue but this one's right here and I think it's going to be just fine okay so let me just go ahead and get those little pieces in here and let those sit there for just a second okay that was that was pretty smooth and this is so nice because prior to these clasps if we wanted to make a layered bracelet we had to trim this leather right to the edge of the clasp and either rivet it in place or use a coil knot or a bunch of o-rings and you know then you always run the risk of that stuff um, slipping out so now I can get this really nice looking layered design without without all the issues of the other thing let me just make sure that's dry are you gonna stay in there I'm not sure okay I really need you to stay in here okay okay I'm just gonna wait another second here but but and the, the key well while I'm doing that I am going to go ahead and add my slider to this big tangly mess here okay let me get the, get these all straightened out here I'm sure something's going to come apart okay there we go get all these lined up here and then I'm going to run my finger up here try to hold everything in place looks okay from this side okay so now I'm going to go ahead and add the slider to all these components and this slider does have a front and a back I picked it because it's got the same design as the clasp on it and I think it'll look really nice so let's get this and put this piece in here okay and as always especially when I'm working with a thinner leather I want to make sure that I keep the um, keep the curve going in, in as the same direction as the bracelet it just makes it a little bit easier and it's a little bit tight surprising but it is a little bit tight and I'm gonna just sort of slide there we go I got all my ends through now there we go get this all straightened out here whoops okay I will tell you that this thread pulls if you don't sort of get it just right to start with it's really pretty durable because it's got a thread core um, and so you can use it really for a bunch of different okay everyone's in place now okay I'm bringing that down okay and now I'm gonna just start to straighten out all these individual pieces there we go that's looking more like it here here okay so I'll get that pretty well centered doesn't have to be exactly centered right now okay but I do want to make sure that these pieces are all all lined up correctly and there's no little bulges sticking out because once I glue the other side it's going to be too late okay there we go so that's a pretty good 
start there. Now, in order to glue this second side in, and it is amazing the difference between the outside and the inside in terms of the length. So now I really am going to close this bracelet and I'm going to put this layer over the top like this. Okay. And I'm going to bring these all the way around. Okay. And I am going to trim them to, like I said, just about not quite a quarter of an inch, but pretty darn close. So I'm going to trim them all right just above the point where I know they're going to go inside of the clasp. And I'm going to make sure that everything's flat and even. I think I need to pull this cord up a little bit. So just, you know, do take your time and adjust these. It's just one of those things you don't have to rush it. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and trim, trim. There we go. Okay. And so now I can go ahead and open up the bracelet again. Hopefully I can open up the bracelet again. I'd like not to lose track of all these little ends. And then I'm going to come in here, put a little bit of a glue inside of here and put some on my ends, trying not to get it on the main part of the leather. And I'm going to just go ahead and put those in. Okay. Oops, there we go. Okay. Okay. And those little tin threads are a little, they're a little slippery, but boy, I think they add a nice touch, so I'm not giving up on them. Okay, here we go. There's that one. And come on, come on. Um, the one one other thing that's nice about this tin thread is you notice this piece right here looks like it's wrinkly but you know you can just pull it and it just smooths right out okay so let's see if i got it okay okay i really should wait a couple more minutes and there we go i just need to center up my my class i probably could have come a little shorter on the tin threads but i think i can probably solve that problem just by running them into the bracelet a little bit further. Come on. I'm going to put a little bit more glue on this. Okay. Come on. And I can, in this case, I think I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and just kind of push this piece in there. There. That's more like it. There we go. Okay, so now I'm really pretty happy with the way this looks. That's a nice looking bracelet. I still need to center up that slider a little bit, but I will do that later. But And you can definitely add additional sliders if you want. It doesn't have to be the one, but now these little pieces are really nicely in shape. So, okay, I'm going to set that project aside. And then we're going to take a look at how to do the Josephine knot. And there is a YouTube video specifically on making this knot. Uh, and so if you don't quite pick this up or if you want to look at a different view of it with some thicker cord, here we go. So I'm just starting with a little sample piece of leather here. And this is kind of, so this is going to be sort of the center of my knot. So I'm sort of more or less in the center of my cord. Okay. And I am going to do, do, do. I am going to bring this underneath. I'm, so I'm taking the left hand and I'm going to bring it underneath the same side. Again, this is the middle. I think I'm going to just tie a little overhand knot here so you can really see that this is the middle because I don't want you to think it's part of the knot. Here we go. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, okay. There we go. So I'm going to take one side, I'm putting it underneath the other side. This is sort of counterintuitive. Usually we put things over, but this one's going under. Okay. And then I'm going to take the other side and I'm going to come over that loop, trying to hold everything together underneath that tail. And then I've got something here that looks like a pretzel right here, three different holes. And so now I'm going to take my other tail, so I went over, under, and then I'm just going to start weaving over, under, over, under. And I've got this 
big messy looking thing here and we are going to then go ahead and take it and straighten it up and adjust it okay and if I get the size of the pretzel that usually works better here we go I can see it coming okay well it's a little crooked right here okay there we go there we go I sort of didn't quite start in the middle but here is the knot right here okay now and I will mention that if you make this knot and tighten up this little part right here you can bring this up and put it in a little cord ending and you actually have a really cute earring component with a little loop at the bottom where you can dangle um, an earring component okay so now I've got this piece that I've been working on this is going to be the topper of my bracelet and again I'll just mention that you can see that this knot at the bottom if I tighten this loop all the way up and just brought these two ends together I would have a really cool bracelet uh, earring component so okay so now though I'm working with two strands I'm going to do exactly the same thing with two strands I just have to pay attention to keeping those together so I'm going to take the two strands on the left and I'm going to make a loop and bring them under they're under okay and then I'll take the other two strands and I lay them over that loop underneath the other side and then I get I have my donut let me see if I can just set this down for a sec so you can see the donut so here's the here's the one two three holes of the donut I excuse me a pretzel 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 okay so I come over under and then I'm going to take the other ends and I'm going to weave them over under over and under okay and this looks like a real mess but it really does so now the key with the two strands is that I just have to take my time and make sure that everything's laying flat and I can kind of I and I really do have to spend a little time adjusting this okay there we go that looks like and you notice that I'm trying to get the distance between the knots about the same and because I'm actually going to rivet this I want this knot to be pretty snug right towards the middle and that looks I think pretty good let's do that one more time um, and again it's a little hard to hold it and show it at the same time but let me just see if I can really slow this down so I'm bringing the two tails on the left under like that there we go and then I'm bringing the other side over that loop there we go over the loop underneath the tails on the other side okay and then I'm going to take them and weave them through the pretzel okay okay and so I'm going to go over this side under over under okay and because on the YouTube video because I'm working with bigger cord the bracelet project itself I think is pretty horrible but but because I, I did the knot with bigger cord um, I think it is a little easier to see the knot there we go okay okay and again I'm making sure that these pieces see I've got one that's twisted here so I just need to take it and flip it around and make sure everything's laying flat okay so that's this piece that I am going to now I'm actually going to rivet this to a piece of navy blue leather which I'm then going to put on top of this turquoise leather here I think that's going to look pretty nice and uh, the kind of subtle colors um, and so I want to move the tray for just a second because I don't want to try to hammer on this tray and we're going to do a little bit of riveting we've done this before so I'm not going to do the whole project but here's my my bench block and I have my hammer and I have my 
tear cast rivet setter here. This is the four millimeter rivet setter. I've got a bunch of rivets. And I've got a nail setter here. And the reason why I have a nail setter is this is five millimeter leather. And if I try to punch this with a regular leather punch, my chances of going off the side and kind of piercing the side of the leather are pretty huge. So I'm going to really start by making my hole with a, and I've marked this one hole here, with a nail setter. So I'm going to set that right there, okay? And it's right, I've got a little, you know what, before I even do that, let me mark a few things. I've sort of predetermined that I'm going to do a rivet every half inch. And that's a lot, you don't have to do that many, but so I'm just going to go ahead with my pen and mark a few more little dots here. Okay. Okay, this metallic Sharpie is nice because it shows up on the dark leather. So there I've got some some dots marked and I'm actually going to go all the way down if I was doing this for real. So, okay, so here we go. So I'm going to put this nail setter right on the gold dot. And I know it's a little hard to see. Here we go. And then I'm just going to hit it until it comes through, and it will come through. Okay. My, my table is not really solid either, but it will come through. Okay. And it's coming. Okay. And I might just hit it from the other side here too. Okay. And so it's a good way to to go ahead and make a hole when you just don't have a whole bunch of rules. Now, now I've got a hole and I've managed not to pierce my leather. So to set the rivet, and again, we've done this before, but I'm going to take, the rivet has two parts. It has a little bottom part and a top part. These are snap rivets. And so what I'll do is, okay, I'm going to go ahead and push the bottom part through, okay? And then I will go ahead and I'm just for the sake of demoing this, I'm going to go ahead and set my little knot. And so it's centered. You can see that little tiny bit of silver there is the rivet. Now, if I try to hammer this all the way down flat, I am just going to manage to you know, just spread the knot out. So what I'm going to do is something a little different. I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue on that, and then I'm going to set the top on, which is always huge fun. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and set this little rivet right here. Come on there, you. There we go. Okay. So it's on there, and because these are snap rivets, it's almost like not going to come off right now. But I am going to go ahead and set and hammer it down a little bit. I just don't want to go down as far as I would if I was just doing the plain leather. So what I've got here is a finished strip where I use black and red leather. And, you know, I just went ahead and set a, a rivet in between the knots just for a little bit of extra decoration. You know, not necessary, might be more than what you want but here's the finished component this is what it looks like from the back um, and I've got a total of six knots with the ends on the side and so now I'm going to glue it into this bracelet you notice like the one before I have already pre-glued the the uh, bigger leather inside of the bracelet and so this one I know that this, this is my center right here. This is my center. So, and I can't just glue one side in and wrap it around because my knots won't be centered. So I have to kind of, I have to kind of, let me put this back up here. I have to kind of lay it here and see how it centers up. I'm going to hold my center here. Okay. So I've, I'm holding it once I've got it centered. And then I'm going to go ahead and close the bracelet. Do, do, do. And then I'm going to trim the leather so it goes into the bracelet. And boy, I didn't leave myself a whole lot of slack there. But so, but I'm going to go ahead and take 
these two ends here. Now that I know how long my flat leather needs to be, I'm going to go ahead and trim these off with either flush cutters or I'm going to put some glue on these. Now this is a two millimeter leather and so that means that I've got two, four, six, eight. I've got eight plus five is 13 inches worth of stuff to go into a 10 mil, 13 millimeters of stuff to go into a 10 millimeter space. So I'm going to have to do some smushing here. Okay. At this end. Okay. And it's just going to take a minute. Sometimes I get one side in and then I just really kind of crank over and wedge the other side in there. And I think we almost got it. Almost got it. Okay. And I probably, you know, I could have used one and a half millimeter leather, wouldn't quite be having this issue, but I really wanted the, it to be, you know, I'm not loving this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my scissors or flush cutters. I'm going to cut these off at an angle. Okay. And these are, this is, by the way, another trick for making leather fit. So I'm cutting them at an angle. And then I'm going to take my, I'm actually going to smush them from the to make them a little narrower. There we go. And okay. Get some more glue on those. Let's see if we have any more luck here this time. Okay. All right, here we go. And I can see that this is really going to go quite a bit better right off the bat okay okay and yeah because leather is soft and you can smush it and I'll get my chain nose pliers and just push those ends in place here whoa there we go that's looking that's looking more like it okay so there's one side and then I'm going to come around and Boy, I think I, 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 I want to say that I think I pre-trimmed this leather to the right size because that's just about spot on. Um, and so I'll go ahead and do the same thing on this side. I think I'm just going to try smooshing it. Okay. Smush. And smush this side. And so I'm actually smushing it so it's, it's narrower rather than just flatter. Okay. Put some glue on here and at this point I could probably open up the bracelet I'll be a little happier if I do that I think I'm gonna put the one side in and whoop you escaped and then I'll put the red in and then I'll put the two blacks in come on Okay. I think it's good to see that, you know, it's just, it takes a little bit of tweaking. It's not like it's just an instant, you know, but, but that's part of what makes it really a crafted project and not just something that's assembled, you know, from a kit is the fact that it does take a little bit of engineering skill. Okay. There we go. And again, when the bracelets open, it looks like this. When it's closed, that component sits just really nicely on the top. All right, so that's it for today.